So, years before Ryan Reynolds became Deadpool, he played a super fast snail called Turbo for DreamWorks. And I remember watching this film with my husband, and at one point I said, that snail is going to die of dehydration, okay, from losing too much mucus on high friction surfaces. He looked at me like I was crazy, and he said, snail's got a radio in its mouth and a car alarm in its shell, and this is what you're complaining about? <laughs> Pretty much with that face, yeah. Um, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, nitrous oxide magic does not change the biology of how a snail moves. Okay, he's going to turn into a snail tur jerky. I, I believe he's going to turn into jerky. I would stand by that. And he called me a nerd. And I called him a nerd lover, because that's what he is. And we laughed, but that's the kind of person that I am. Now, let's ponder another scenario. What would happen if we shot Luke Cage, the bulletproof man, in his butthole? You can giggle all you want, it's okay. But it's a valid question, okay. Do you remember the opening scene of the second Guardians of the Galaxy movie when Drax was swallowed whole by that tentacle monster? He could stab it from the inside, right? They made fun of him for it, but I say dude's got a point. Okay. Just because his epidermis is somehow bulletproof doesn't necessarily mean that his internal organs are also bulletproof. Okay. Can we just all agree that since there is an opening, no sphincter muscle is strong enough to keep out a bullet <laughs> traveling at 1,700 miles per hour? Okay, so that bullet's going in there. And once it's inside, it's going to follow the path of least resistance. Okay, so I think it's going to go back and forth between his bulletproof skin until momentum wears out. Even if that doesn't kill him, what would happen if we, I don't know, shot him in the ear, right? I think uh, a big bullet like this one would get lodged so far down his ear canal, it would function like a metal earplug, rendering him deaf. I mean, come on, how is he going to get it out? They can't cut it out of him, and bullets are made out of copper and lead, so you can't use a magnet either. Uh, if you use a small bullet like this one, I think it would pierce his eardrum and go into his brain. We don't know what would happen, because in three seasons of Luke Cage and the Defenders, not a single bad guy ever said, hey, maybe we should stop shooting this guy in the torso. Like, just aim for a face hole, right? <laughs> just find a hole, any hole. Probably should not have said that. <laughs> it's going to be a meme now. But <laughs> why do we talk about impossible scenarios like this? What if we discuss this question in anatomy class? So if we discuss this in science class, maybe we can get them to pay a little bit more attention. One of the issues we have in science class is that a lot of students think science is this advanced concept that doesn't really apply to them, and that's not true. Everything we do is science-related. Me standing on the stage is Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So as I'm exerting my force on the stage, it's also pushing back at my feet. This is partially why wearing high heels suck, okay? <laughs> they force us to shift more of our weight forward onto the balls of our feet, putting more pressure on us because pressure is calculated by force divided by area. More, air, uh, more force, less area means more pressure, so ow. Uh, that's why we hate those so much at the end of the night, you know, six streets, zombie girls, that's why. <laughs> if we expand this idea to the Marvel Universe, okay, what would really happen to Ant-Man? Well, in the movie Ant-Man, they thought about shrinking everything down, right? They said they did that by decreasing distance between atoms. Middle school, science time. Everything's made out of atoms. If this whole entire room were one atom, then all of the mass would be concentrated at the nucleus, like one tiny grain of sand in the middle of the room. So technically, there is space. However, <laughs> there is still something called the conservation of mass, okay? Even if we forget about the intermolecular forces that keep the atoms apart, if I took a fluffy muffin and I punch it, and I punch it until it's like a flat patty, that's a Bill Burr reference. Uh, it would look smaller, but it should still weigh the same, okay? So weight is just mass times gravity, so I'm going to use those two terms pretty much interchangeably here. That means Scott Lane, at this big, still weighs 180 pounds. That's a problem, okay? First of all, no flying around on the pet ant for you. The second you get on that ant, instant, horrible, <laughs> just liquid and death. Horrible death for him. Uh, secondly, if he were on this stage right now, he would leave a dent with every single step he takes, 
because it's like me standing on two pushpins, okay? And if he were to stand on glass, he would probably crack it. And if he were to try to walk on one of those seats that you're sitting on, he's going to sink into the seat. It's like stabbing the mattress with a knife. He wouldn't be able to get around very well. Now, in the trailer, there was one scene where he was running up some guy's arm and just punching him in the face. I call BS there, sorry. I did the math. This distance here to an end is like two football fields back to back. How is he running this in two seconds? How many of you can actually hold up 180 pounds like this? Right? So he should be climbing that arm, pulling out arm here <laughs> as he goes, and leaving bloody footprints with every single step that he takes. Fine, he gets onto the shoulder, jumps onto the chin, and just punches down. You know what will happen? Nothing. OK, this is why. It will look like this, because his body is only this big. OK, the skin on my chin is thicker than the height of his entire body. If he were to punch me, he wouldn't even hit bone. OK, he would just make a tiny, tiny hole like being poked by a little needle. I don't know how to break this to you guys. Sometimes size matters, no matter what you've heard. <laughs> he would make a really good pimple popper, that's what I'm saying. It wouldn't really have any kind of effect on me. He's like a tattoo needle, really, that's it. Second movie, Ant Man and the Wasp, I'm sorry. Uh, no wasp wing can create enough lift to keep a human airborne. I don't care what kind of diet she's on, okay, not happening. They also shrunk down a building to the size of like luggage and threw it around. Okay, come on. Is everything in that building Velcro down? Isn't that some kind of expensive lab with like glass equipment? All of your machines are gonna have to be recalibrated. Okay, this is called Newton's first law of motion, inertia, okay? So everything in motion stays in motion and everything at rest stays at rest. And that's why earthquakes cause so much damage. And unfortunately for this building here, everything's gonna get broken in there. But you don't really need to understand advanced science to ask the question, does this building not have a bathroom? Basic plumbing? Did you nail the toilet seat down? Or are you going to come back to poop on the ceiling? I mean, stop shaking the building. <laughs> it's not going to work. What about that car chase? How fast a car goes depends on how big wheels are and also RPM, revolution per minute. Revolution per minute does not change just because you shrink it down. Okay. That means there would be no car chase because the wheels are tiny now. What about that other scene of the girl who is intangible and couldn't touch a teddy bear? Oh, you're sitting on the bed though. Girl, is your butt not intangible? <laughs> There's actually a video game that designed an <laughs> intangible character and that character just kept sinking through floors of a building. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious, but. Every power has its problems, so if you are able to fly, if you fly too low, you will be running into birds, wires, signs, bugs, buildings. Now, if you fly too high, however, there is something called the ideal gas law. So as pressure goes down, temperature also goes down, you're going to be freezing. Another thing is that if you fly up too quickly, you change pressure too quickly, you could die from diverse disease. It's called decompression sickness. Okay, Thor is not gonna die because he's a god. Jane would be dead for sure. When he takes her up, he doesn't even wrap her up in a Snuggie first, okay? That's just inconsiderate boyfriend behavior. Okay, now you're trying to save a girl from being hit by a bullet by super speed? I got bad news for you. I'm sorry. Inertia and work again. He's, he's not gonna be able to save the girl, okay? She's gonna be a bag of broken bones and ruptured organs by the time you're done with her. I hope you have a good lawyer because, yeah, she's not going to survive that because you just hit her with something that weighs way more than a bullet <sighs> and a much higher speed. Rest in peace. Now, if you were able to freeze time, you would freeze yourself because the heat in the air comes from the friction of molecules rubbing against each other. No motion, no heat. Enjoy the cold. If you're invisible, that means light is not bouncing off of you for people to see, but that also means that your eyes are not catching that light either to interpret into an image. So when you're invisible, you're also blind. <laughs> I know, I'm just crushing dreams left and right. <laughs> if you are able to hear somebody cry for help two blocks away, that means you will hear everything in a two mile radius. You will hear every baby crying, dog barking, TV, every toilet flush, and God forbid you hear what your parents are doing in the next room. None of these superpowers are good, okay? None of them. I could totally go on for hours, and I have, but not today. 
Um, a few years ago, I worked together with TED-Ed to come up with a series of superpower-related animated videos called Superhero Science If Superpowers Were Real. When they came out that summer, they were quite popular. However, YouTube gave me a nickname. They called me Joy, the killjoy of children's dreams. It's actually a nickname that I am quite fond of. Um, but let me clarify. Uh, the objective is to get children interested in science. Can leave their dreams just a little bonus because I'm evil, but that's not the point. The point is, I believe we must first want something before science can catch up to our imagination. So we must first want to fly before someone can invent the airplane, except for accidental discoveries such as artificial sweetener and Viagra. They were actually trying to fix cardiovascular issues, and somebody said, I think we can market that side effect. But most of the time, that's not the order things go, okay? You have to first want it, and then you fix it. Uh, so I've been giving this talk at Comic-Cons all over the United States, and yes, I totally cosplay, I'm a geek. So there I am with my husband as Arsh and Alana, and then Lady Deathstrike, Trinley, and of course, Supergirl at San Diego Comic-Con. So at the end of my panels, sometimes some people will come up to me and just very passionately argue on what would really happen if we had superpowers. And what I always tell them is, you could be right. We don't know, because that universe doesn't really exist, right? None of the questions I've asked tonight has any kind of like definitive answer. But the fact that we're talking about it now, this conversation is the point. So maybe some kid is going to hate that I said Turbo is going to die, get interested in biology and cure cancer. Maybe somebody is going to hate that I made flying lame and then invent the magic carpet. So when I'm old and gray, I can use it. That means you can use it too, all because we gather one afternoon to discuss how Thor is going to kill Jane because he's an inconsiderate boyfriend. You're welcome. That's how it works. So I'm going to end this talk by asking a question that I always ask at Comic-Cons. Do you think Wolverine, with his power to regenerate, might be circumcised? <laughs> I think you have an answer, okay. Every time I ask this question, somebody always says, well, no, because wouldn't it just grow back? Can you imagine the face of the doctor who had to circumcise his baby? <laughs> uh, it probably looks something like this, if I can get to it. <laughs> uh, but actually, no, because mutant powers don't kick in until teenage years. Otherwise, all of his baby teeth will grow back. Imagine, right, Wolverine with two rows of baby teeth. Do you still <laughs> want to kiss him now? <laughs> like Jaws, but like... Not scary. <laughs> but honestly, though, I don't think he's circumcised because he was born uh, in Canada in 1832 with the last name Howlett, and circumcision really wasn't a thing until like the 1900s. So most likely he has his foreskin and he's stuck with it. Now, that's why I believe that character should be donating organs every single day. That would be a good use of his time, right? Here's a sign issue. You want a kidney? Here you go. You want a heart? Come back tomorrow. I'm a little tired today, right? Save a life a day. That would be the best use of his time. But he has bigger problems than that. If every time something falls off of him, another one just grows back, think about it. He can never get a haircut, right? And it's not just the hair on the top of his head. Most of you don't trim your eyebrows or your eyelashes because men don't care. Uh, <laughs> But most of you don't have to because when hair gets too long, they get vulnerable and they fall off on their own. Not for Wolverine, though. So eventually, he's going to have to braid his eyebrows and eyelashes just to be able to see. And it should look like this. <laughs> braid, braid, braid. But that's just the hair on his head. What about the hair everywhere else? I think, depending on how curly his body hair is, he is either going to look like a Chia Pet or a Cousin It from the Adams Family. Um, I want to say special thanks to my two wonderful illustrators, uh, Nora Johnston and Alan Brown, and also my husband for producing the cute baby pictures with me, even though I did all the work. <laughs> Still. <clears throat> so this has just been the best birthday ever. But if some kid is watching this video on YouTube and they get upset, I totally understand. In the last 15 minutes, I have taken a figurative dump on a lot of superpowers. So get mad. Do something about it. Grow up and invent a way for us to have these superpowers without any of the downsides. 
But before that can happen, we have to get them interested first. And the conversation starts right here, right now. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>